everybody, Scalcrafty here again. Mishmash Monday. Uh, we got a lot to get to, a little bit of time to get to it. Uh, for the next couple weeks, my videos might be a little on the short side. I'm still going to try and get three a week out, but they might be a little bit shorter because it's springtime and we have a lot to do around here. We have that short window of weather before it gets kind of too hot to really be doing a lot of work outside. So I've been doing a lot of work outside and coming down here and finishing up. Today we're going to be doing a screwdriver. But I want to talk, uh, before we get to that, real quick about that uh, pot that I got last week. That, uh, you know, uh, if you've ever seen any Westerns, they were almost in every Western you ever saw. Let me show what I'm talking about. Now, this is the pot or pan I'm talking about. And if you remember, in every Western, you know, if, if uh, somebody gets injured, whether it's a good guy, bad guy, whatever, they always just take a pot like this with some water in it. And they take a, usually like a dish towel or something and wring out the dish towel and pat the person on the head with the water and that seems to be a cure whether it's a gunshot whether it's malaria whatever it is you take that towel you wring it out and then you pat the person on the forehead and it was seems seemed to be a cure back in the old wild west but there was something else that this was always used in and i always got a kick out of it okay the second thing that i used to see these used for all the time in every western is whenever you see a, a doctor or somebody would uh, take a pair of these and and dig out the bullet from a bad guy and and they would be digging out and, and finally when they got it they would hold it look at it and then they would do this and <laughs> they would always drop it in that metal pan they never threw it away they never threw it in the garbage they always go back in that same pan they used the day before to pat his forehead with the water so i always thought that was funny and i always every time i see one of these i always look for a bullet in there because i that's what they were used for back then okay so for today's project we got this beautiful screwdriver that uh just lovely and big and when i tell you big this is a regular screwdriver you know a regular one and look at take a look at the <laughs> comparison it's just overdone you know it's uh i don't know it a screwdriver this big and the tip is a little uh needs a little work uh otherwise the facets all look good you know remember there's the little square the facets are always you got to take a little extra time to do it in so you know what let's take it to the wire brush see if there's any writing or anything before we get started Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation. You can see here, no markings that I could see, but look, you know, we got that dreaded, this is the worst kind of rust I hate. Look at that, that pitting there. We got some more of it over here. Uh, this is just staining, that's not bad. Uh, more staining, again, not bad, but this is the worst stuff. This is when the carbon gets close to the surface, you know, when you get that bubbly rust, that's the worst kind of rust. So we gotta get that out of there, you don't want, you know, the patina covers all that. So that's why, the, you know, sure, it's nice to have patina because you don't see it. <laughs> and remember what the back looks like. Okay, because we always like to do that up nice. And we got a little bit of a crack here. Well, you know, we're going to see what we can do to address that. But, you know, the scales are in good shape or whatever. And we'll see what we're going to do when when we take it down as far as color-wise or whatever. So let's uh, let's start grinding this. And remember these facets. This is tough, believe it or not. These square shafted screwdrivers, because remember you got a flat over here, remember? On both sides you got a flat, and then on the sides you have a flat, so there's nothing sharp. Okay, and then this is all flat. Now if you tried to do this on the belt sander, you would get waves, or so it would be, it would kind of, because the belt sander curves when you touch it, you wouldn't get that flat area. So that's why I prefer the uh, flap disc, because you're hitting it from this angle, and it flattens it right out and then the same here so let's get started now, with one of the things. best accessories you can have in a shop is a corner vise like this stanley 700 and uh what we're going to do here is we want to put our screwdriver in here like this so that we can address each facet facing up like this so we'll do that then we'll turn it this way the problem is that because of this is elongated and it's not square it's only touching the vice is only touching at two points and you really would have to crank down very hard which could d disrupt the scales and you don't want to do that so what you do is you take a piece of just an ordinary piece of rag you know just like this i have an old t-shirt i ripped the piece off and what you do is you're going to wrap it around the front remember it tapers down here like a teardrop so you're going to wrap this rag around the bottom here you see just like this just it's don't have to be pretty just wrap it around and you want this it's going to be thicker than the top because this will compress 
Now when you put it into the, uh, the vise here like this, get rid of any loose ends. Uh, when you put it into the vise here, you see what's going to happen when we tighten it up. I have this side facing up. Watch what happens when it starts to touch the wood. This compresses and look how tight that is now. That's solid. Now you couldn't do that if you didn't have this here. You'd really have to crank down, but this is, we're not that tight and yet this is solid. Now we'll hit this top here from this little bevel down, then we'll f we'll turn it 90 degrees and do each one till we get Now everything. this is important. When you're at this here, this is belly button height. That's the perfect height for this because your elbows will be uh, at a, four, at a uh, 90 degree angle and you'll just give it nice spring back. So this is uh, where you want this. Now when you touch this here, you're, when I'm doing it without the plug, it, it's uh, unplugged now and I'm just practicing, but you, you don't know if it's going to be uh, canted one way or the other. So when the uh, grinder is running, you're going to slightly touch it and drag it this way. Okay, you're going to lightly touch it and drag it. And then you'll see if it's shiny over here, that means that I'm canted this way. If it's shiny here, I'm canted. So you want it to be straight across. And when you got it straight across, the muscle memory will tell you where it is and then you touch it and you just you just lean back. You don't you know you don't even have to use your arms. You just touch it and lean back, touch it and lean back and uh, and you're going to do that all the way around. You'll see what that looks like. Okay, let's take a look at what it looks like now. Now, here's one we didn't do. You see the side here and this is the one we did. Okay, now you see how this is, for the most part, it's very flat. It's all the way down. And remember this curve here? We just touched it and drag it. Now, this is just the initial grind. We're going to touch it up and everything. But do you see how nice that looks with just that, that flap sander? And I, that's why I like that better than the bell sander for these. Afterwards, you'll touch just this to get that flat back. Because this might sharpen that a little bit. So you'll touch that to get that back later. Now, two more important things is that you should get one of these clamp lights here. You know, the clamp light, you can see, I can adjust this light so that I can get it where to get that. Uh, you want it to be, when this is in here, you want to see that this is what it should look like, okay? You want to see that because if, if it's dark, you can't see where you're hitting or not. But if you do it like this, you can see if you're hitting here or there. So a clamp light is a really good thing over your work area. Second thing is that... Uh, even though this is a thick piece of metal, it does get hot when you're doing this, you know, especially when you're using a, a, a grinding or flapper disc. So what you want to do is after every facet, dip it in cold water until it's room temperature again, and then continue. Don't wait till it gets too hot because then you might ruin the temper, even though it's up here. And that's the thinner the metal, obviously, the more, uh, susceptible that is to heat. Okay, we're about an hour into this and you can see we took care of most of the metal you could see here and very happy got rid of all the rust that was there you see and uh you know we still got to go over it with the the fiber wheel to get all this and make it a nice set but you see it's picking up some fingerprints here but everything looks good the tip looks good we redid the tip we'll we'll thin it out just a little bit maybe or i don't know it looks very good but we'll we'll see how we feel and uh and now we're going to have to start working on how we did the initial back here. This is the initial. You see, we are getting we got rid of all the nicks and dents. And and now we have to, this will, this side here will go when we do the scales. So now we're going to sand the scales. But first, we got to let the, uh, close the pigeon coop so that the cats don't get in there. <laughs> okay. here we sand down the handles couple things to talk about when sanding the handles down first of all you're going uh, against the grain you know the grain runs this way you're sanding this way because you have a belt sand you really can't hold it that way and uh, it's okay to do it that way but the main thing is you have to have one of those belt cleaners they look like this they're uh, like a eraser for a pencil more or less and you touch this to the belt if I wouldn't even attempt it without one of these you're gonna clog your belt up tremendously so every maybe 20 seconds of sanding you got to clean the belt 20 seconds of sanding clean the belt that's really important i use a 120 belt 120 and that's what uh, got it down to this and we'll do some light sanding over here but you really don't have it's very smooth now it gets the metal here remember what we were dealing with before 
So uh, everything's starting to look really good. Now is the time you have to decide what kind of stain you want to use. If you want to use a stain and you have to pay attention to the grain and let me tell you. What. Now here's a regular piece of wood and uh, you know it comes from a tree and the tree stands this way. So uh, this is called end grain. This is called side grain. You know it's cut like this from the tree. Uh, this is side grain, side grain, this is end grain, okay? Now to think of end grain, think of grasping a handful of straws because that's basically what wood is. It's a lot of porous straws that help uh, uh, bring the uh, nutrients from the soil up into the tree through the, if you look microscopically, you would see there's all little dimples, little holes in there. And uh, so when you apply stain to any piece of wood, uh, when you apply it to this, it's not going to absorb as much as it does when you put it to the end grain. And when you put it to the end grain, it gets real dark. And when you put it here, it stays kind of light. Depending on how hard the wood is, it might not absorb too well at all. Now, this is a little model of like a scale that you might get on a, uh, a screwdriver or something like that. And what this is here, if you look, this is, this is side grain. This is side grain on top, and this is end grain. Now, it's cut at an angle, so it kind of tricks you. If it was flat, you'd say, oh, okay, it's end grain, but because it's an angle. So what happens is a lot of times people have trouble when they start staining uh, like a screwdriver handle or something. This here will not absorb, especially if it's a real hardwood, it will not absorb the stain so good, and this will really suck it in and give a very uneven look. And I'm going to show you because I'm going to stain this. And now, show this you. is gunstock stain. I put it into an old <laughs> jar only because uh, the can, after you open and close that can so many times, it really starts to look uh, and doesn't seal too well. Okay, so here we have, I'm going to pl place it on here first. Okay, you can see the color that that gives. Nice color, right? Watch what happens when we put on the end grain. You're going to notice it, it's uh, it's darker. And I'll show you right now. We're laying it on heavy on all across. Now watch what happens when I wipe it off. You give it a second to absorb. And then you take a... Uh, uh, you take a towel that's... Uh, a little bit more dry and you wipe it off and you can see here it's wiping off the uh, the side grain much easier than is the end grain also the end grain will pick up any saw marks things like that and you can see how dark it gets so you see it's uneven stain here it doesn't look too good here it's nice uneven so when this starts to dry you'll see this stands out so that's the problem you have with a lot of scales and it's it's hard to try and get it to look decent and you never know until you put it on. You don't know what kind of grain structure you have until you take and you apply it onto here. And when you apply it onto here, you can see, you can say, well, if you have a nice, because it's always going to be dark around here and here. So sometimes you have to go a little bit lighter and, uh, and then just wipe it in and work it in. And uh, see here, what we have here. And then you look at it and you say, how does it look now? If this one here is pretty even. I like that. But see, it's a little here. We'll wipe that off later and, and just work it back and forth. But you, in the middle here, the top, it's always going to be a little bit lighter. So here it's going to get darker and you might want to wipe it differently. Now, always remember to avoid looking, to make this look much better, always take this as a little bit of mineral spirits in here and always wipe off the rivets here. You'll see this is really important. You don't want this stain drying on here and looking. You see that? It, it comes right off, but take this off the rivets and also off the side here. You see that side metal that's going up? You have to uh, rotate the Q-tip as you're doing it to get all the stain off of there because that makes all the difference in the world. When this is done, you don't want to have a stain on your metal. It just looks uh, like a poor job. Now you can see the uh, stain has been applied and it's on pretty even. Um, that crack here we'll address later on because I did want to cover this with a little bit with a red top. But um, again, you can see how it's uh, even. The stain looks pretty good. You know, again, it'll it'll uh, darken a little bit too when you add the uh, varnish or whatever you put on there. Now here is that uh, piece we did before. Notice the contrast between the side and end grain. You see the difference? And uh, so that's why you always have to see, you could see the rings here. This is all like kind of end grain down here. And you could see this is all side grain. You could see a little lighter here. So you have to think about that when you're applying stain. You might want to add a second coat around the top here to make it look even. And this is what you have to deal with. Now you can see I had a little bit of extra stain around the side grain there because the end grain was nice and dark and this was a little bit light and I, it wasn't even. Now when this dries, 
You see how it is. You buff it out accordingly until it becomes well, like you One way you can avoid the blotching or any of the uneven stain is you could use what they call a preconditioner or you could, a lot of times the old timers would uh, give it a coat of neutral or natural stain, a clear stain, to, uh, to stop the absorption of the stain. The reason I don't like to do that on handles is because what you're actually doing is putting stain on top of on top of the conditioner and it's not a real penetrating coat and when you have a handle that your hands are going on you could wear it off so that's why I like to do it direct uh, and try and get as much stain penetration as you can for a longer lasting hand. Now you know my favorite part remember what this screwdriver looked like before we started and we are calling this project done. Uh, this was uh, a kind of a long video because I really want to go through the steps and trying to get this handle. I believe this is pretty much what the uh, the screwdriver looked like when it was new. Sometimes they came with lighter handles, but I, I just like this classic look. But it might be the last time I do <laughs> this type of uh, handle on a screwdriver. But uh, let's take a look at what we have here. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Uh, there is a, a, you know, I did the staining as I showed you. Then I put two coats of shellac and uh, and lightly uh, wire um, steel wool, triple O steel wool between each coat. And then after the last coat, triple O steel wool. And then I use butcher's wax on there to finish. This is a, a handle that'll last for uh, much longer than the original factory finish. And and you can see what it looks like. Now, originally I was going to put some red up here because the cracks are usually hard to fill in. But I was able to do this crack and it, you really, it, you know, it doesn't show up. I, I, it, what I did is I watered down some glue and kept filling it in until I was surface level and sanded it. So I got a nice fix on that crack. You really can't see it, you know, it's not pronounced. And uh, the reason you don't fill a crack in before you stain it is because uh, no stain will adhere to any kind of uh, glue or anything. And it really stands out like a sore thumb. But I think that's a nice repair that I'm very happy with. So the handle came out good. We did the back. Remember what the back looked like before. And uh, the back is all nice now. And of course here. The facets, you know, this is this is always a good for Look at that straight line facet on, on all those, right? Isn't that beautiful? That's something that you, you strive to get. Look at that. It's just, it's a really nice, and, and again, these are flattened. They're not wavy. They're not curvy. And, you know, everything. And it's a little bit of a practice it takes. It's not hard. It just takes some time. And the blade came out good. Nice thickness to it. Uh, uniform. It's just, a, it's a beautiful screwdriver. And when I tell you it's a big screwdriver, you know, we're used to the Irwin, the big one that came in the kits. This is a big monster screwdriver. And you can see that this one's about 20% bigger than the Irwin and uh, obviously than a, a regular screwdriver, you know. So you could see this, the different the size in, in uh, comparison there. But uh, this was a fun project. I hope you uh, you did enjoy sticking along here because uh, there was a lot of... of, of instruction that went along with getting these handles to look like that and not blotchy and things like that and still get the stain to penetrate so that one's in the can so closing wasn't much of a mosh but uh we did get that one screwdriver done next time i think we're this week we will be hitting that pipe wrench that'll be the last one for the for the haul that i got but thanks very much for tuning in hope you have a great start of the week take care now bye-bye <laughs>